Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switchwatch. How are you all doing today? Now today's review is our Pato Box on the Nintendo Switch, a very weird, quirky game that's inspired by Punch Out, a game that I really, really like. So I was very interested to give this one a try, find out if it's worth your hard-earned cash or not. Let's get on with it. I often wonder at what Nintendo think about their older franchises. Series that are well loved but often underutilised in favour of the next Mario Party or Zelda spin-off that not many people asked for. When you've got games like Punch-Out, Star Tropics and F-Zero desperate for a new game, why don't they have new games every few years? Well, maybe they don't know where to take the franchise to the next level, and that's fine. But when you have a game like Pato Box, very much inspired by Punch-Out, that take that concept and completely overshadow it in terms of ideas and ambition, I think Nintendo should think harder. Pato Box is what the next Punch-Out should have been. When you have a man with a duck's head, you know that Pato Box's story is going to be a little bit of a strange one. Pato Box is the main character, the one with the duck's head, and a boxing champion, a legend of sporting history. During his latest championship bouts, however, something goes awry. He is spiked by the very company that has sponsored him throughout his illustrious career. Losing the match, he is thrown out the back, stabbed, and left to die. However, his life is saved by an employee of Deathlock, the company that just abandoned our duck-headed hero. Together, they enter the headquarters of Deathlock and seek revenge to take down the world-dominating corporation. The story is highly fantastical and weird, which is something you would expect, but you would be surprised at how seriously they take it in Pato Box. There's a lot of dialogue, interactions, backstory to unveil. I was actually quite a fan of what they tried to do here. They tried to make the absurd serious and, in turn, purposely made it even more absurd. I enjoyed finding out how we would take down the corporation and talking with all the maniacal goons of the leader, Mr. Den. So the gameplay, if you've played Punch-Out before then you'll know all about Pato Box. I've got to admit I really enjoyed the puzzle aspect to that series, learning patterns and such, so I was highly enthusiastic about taking on Pato Box. Despite being a small indie game however, Pato Box takes the standard Punch-Out gameplay and takes it to the next level. It expands on the standard gameplay of what you would expect from a Punch-Out style game and also the scope of the genre, dragging in an adventure and exploration mode too. There's a full-fledged adventure mode in Pato Box and that really took me by surprise. The story mode very much came from left field. This is not just a standard boxing game. As Pato Box heads for revenge, he explores the headquarters of Deathlock, yes, walking around and interacting with people and things, some exploration and minigames are plenty. It's surprisingly robust. As you view Pato Box from the rear, you'll find that wandering around is a little on the clunky side. It may take you back to the pre-analog 3D games, which isn't always the nicest of comparisons. It's actually not that bad though once you force yourself to adjust to the stiffness. Pato Box interacts with everything with a punch, which I always found a bit humorous. During your adventure, you'll be navigating your way through meat grinders, avoiding security cameras, finding items for employees, hitting switches to open doors, and so on. It's remarkably planned out for what is essentially a silly boxing game. After the initial level and encounter with the first associate of the big boss, the plan is to take all of the tokens from the rest of them in order to open the door to Mr. Den's office. This brings in a sort of Mega Man style select your robot master menu from the elevator, choosing which floor you want to explore and boss you want to take on. You can do it in almost any order you please, although due to a lack of upgrades for defeating bosses, there's no real benefits for choosing one specific order, but it's nice to have the choice. Do you want to head to the officers to join in with the party, or head into the sewers to clean out the poisonous gas? Which one? Surprising is the word for this game. It's a decent length with plenty of variety, and for the most part, I really enjoyed it. It's not exactly revolutionary though. It doesn't do anything we haven't seen before, and there are a couple of low points. After completing the first two floors, you are forced into a run-in with a crazy scientist conducting his ungodly research. This stage is quite poor in all honesty. The fighting section is just a huge step up in difficulty and is different in the fact that you're actually trying to absorb positive energy while avoiding negative energy. It's an exercise in frustration and repetition as you try to get down the patterns. It just seems out of place and misjudged. Aside from a small point like this, it's still really enjoyable though. 
The fighting is probably what you're most interested in, right? Well, if you play Punch-Out, the moves are pretty much identical. You can dodge left, right, punch with both the left and right with different buttons, press down to block, and if you push up and punch, you'll use a strong lunge attack. What I like most about the standard fighting is that it's not just about wailing on your foe's face. There's a lot more going on. You'll be punching grenades out of the air back to your opponent, picking up food to throw in a cooking pot, and dodging laser beams. Bosses generally have three stages to their fight which ramps up in speed, difficulty and attack variations. For me, this is where the game is more innovative and really takes the punch out concept to the next level. Working out how to take down these bosses are puzzles in themselves, but there are hints laying around the environments of the story mode that can really lay it out for you. For example, the chef boss, I would have had no idea how to take this guy down without reading some of the papers that told me about catching food and the little lobster's part in the whole fight. If you don't fancy the adventure mode, then you can go straight into arcade mode or boss rush mode just to get to the fights. Personally, as fun as this is, you're definitely missing a trick if you don't at least go through the adventure mode first. While this game has been on Steam for a short time, the Nintendo Switch release has implemented motion controls, which some of you will either love or hate. These are only for the fighting sections rather than adventure, and I think they work okay. They are fun, for sure, although the difficulty of the game may not make them the best choice. What I found interesting is that you don't stretch your arms out to punch like in arms, but whack them down like you're hitting a drum. A little unnatural, but works well with response times, as do all the other gestures, such as dodging and blocking. Uh, I personally wouldn't use it, but I have to admit it does feel kind of cool smashing your fist into the faces of enemies this way. The gameplay overall for me, while Shovel Knight took the 2D retro platformer to a whole new level, Patobox has done the same with the Punch-Out formula. It's taken a classic retro genre that's well loved by everyone and extrapolated it into something else, something that I had no idea that I wanted so much. Controls are responsive enough and the creativity is very much there in the fighting. I really like the gameplay a lot, aside from that one point a third of the way through that really soured the experience. Still very good though. The visual style is obviously very striking, the solid black and whites with nothing in between will definitely give you vibes of Mad World on the Wii from Platinum Games. The minimalistic inked comic book style instantly grabs your senses. The style of the character designs is awesome too, almost like Shin Megami Tensei style design and they really catch your eyes. The visual absurdity too always brings a smile to your face, the duck motif is through the roof and I love it. Just wandering around Pato Box's penthouse after you've collected a fair amount of tokens and just looking at the artwork on display is always chuckle worthy. Obviously while it does look stunning and amazing, there are a few drawbacks that come with this kind of art style. Sometimes it can be difficult to differentiate between different objects and motion isn't always the best as well as the distance perspective being a little hard to get a grip with at times. So it does have its flaws, that may affect your gameplay a little but for me it's well worth the sacrifice. One major downside to Patobox is, sadly, the frame rate. During the important fighting, it's perfect. However, in the adventure mode, some of the larger areas can drop the frame rates down a lot, especially when you're rotating Patobox himself. It looks like the screen is ripping apart almost, which is a shame. It's not like this all the way through, but it is highly noticeable and something that I hope will be addressed, as it did take the feeling of polish away from the game fairly significantly. The audio department, you have a classic 80s synth vibe with an almost future noir feeling in there too. I think it's absolutely fantastic and really adds to the class of the game. Composed mostly by an artist called Contraval, I think you should definitely pay some attention to his work. The sound effects too are great and smashing your opponent's face feels very nice indeed. What I would have liked to have heard is some voice acting. I feel this game could have done with some hammy, hard-boiled detective kind of narration and character voice work. It could have wholeheartedly added to the ludicrousness of the game, although it's understandable that they may not have done for their budget, especially to try and get it spot on.
For £13.49 and $14.99, you're looking at a really good deal in my eyes. Some games with much less to offer have asked for much more. The story mode will probably last you a good 7 or 8 hours, maybe even longer, if you get stuck on the difficult parts that I mentioned. There's the addition of motion controls and boss rush arcade mode, which could keep you satisfied. For me, it's solid value for your hard-earned cash. Overall, if you're a fan of Punch-Out or nostalgic for that sort of arcade experience, then look no further than Patobox. It's weird, wonderful, and looks as wacky as it plays. The adventure mode is a hugely welcome surprise, despite a couple of rough points and questionable frame rate. Patobox delivers the unexpected and gave you something you didn't know you actually wanted until they gave it to you. The standard fighting is of course up to scratch and more polished than the adventuring part, and the fact that you can just concentrate on that if you want to is welcome too. It delivers fun and challenge in equal measure. It looks and sounds fantastic too, which makes it into a very solid quirky package. If it wasn't for the frame rate and that one gameplay section a third of the way through, this could have been a very high score. But actually right now, what it is, it's an 8 out of 10. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this review of Patobox on the Nintendo Switch. I hope you've enjoyed it, found it useful in some way. If you did, then hit that like button and leave a comment below telling us what you think. As always, much love to our subscribers. And if you're new here, then why not be one of them too? Hit that subscribe button and that bell button to keep up to date with all of our Switch related content, reviews, gameplays, and features once in a while. I've been Jordan from Switch Watch, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.